this one can inject 10 people. The thing is that we need to be trustworthy. Many life-saving medicines are meant to be free for everyone in Uganda. But a medical mafia is selling them on the black market. We are not supposed to sell it. We are supposed to give it for free. BBC Africa Eye goes undercover to investigate. Drugs, 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 drugs. The business of drugs is more important than the business of God. But as we dig deeper, things start to go wrong. Our team is snatched. There are many diseases which kill people in my country, Uganda. But one disease has claimed more lives than any other. Malaria. Here in Kamuli, Eastern Uganda, this health center receives 30 cases every single day. Almost all of them are children. Make no mistake, malaria is still the number one cause of death in Uganda and it cannot be taken lightly. Medicine to treat malaria and other diseases is given out free by our government, but only when they are in stock. When drugs run out, as often seems the case, patients have to pay, and parents, many of them poor, cannot afford it. I would actually sometimes dip into my pocket. It's an expensive drug for these, these poor people here. They can't afford. They so can't. do you think then they if die so much. Patients die. Children die. I should admit they die. Government and foreign aid can only cover 67% of the country's needs. But there is a darker side as to why other Ugandan children cannot get free access to drugs like anti-malarials they need to survive. Medicine theft by medical professionals. It's sad. We have very good health workers who are committed to their job and who want to serve the population. But we have a few rotten eggs that are actually doing this. And we need to get these rotten eggs out of the basket. The only way to infiltrate the dangerous world of the medicine mafia is to go undercover. But my face is very well known in Uganda. So I've put together an undercover team, journalists Kasim Mohammed and Godfrey Badevie. They will pose as foreign businessmen wanting to buy stolen Ugandan government drugs. They are easy to spot. Boxes are stamped UG, Government of Uganda, not for sale. We take our investigation to the north of Uganda, to the border town of Arua, where the main state hospital is widely reported to often suffer from medicine shortages. Here we meet Jamila Atim, a records officer at Arua Hospital. She is offering us stolen hepatitis B vaccines. I don't want you to go any further. Yeah. The value of hep B is for 10 doses. Sorry. In one bottle, it is a dose for 10 people. So we have 2,000. Jamila says the vaccines were meant for South Sudanese refugees in northern Uganda. How did Jamila get her hands on them? If they want 5,000, we signed for 7,000. You understand? For the Ugandan equivalent of around $800, we buy 50 of the 2,000 bottles on offer. We got 50 hepatitis B vaccine because someone is actually greedy and they think about them and their families and they're not even thinking about the people who would likely be saved because of these vaccines. We keep the vaccines safe in a mobile fridge so we can return them to the government of Uganda after the end of our investigation. We need to expose, we need to shame, expose these thieves. And maybe when we expose, then fewer people will be, will, people will think twice. But the problem does not end in Arua. We're going to Gulu, we're going to be meeting a medical practitioner, Patrick Kidega. He runs a private clinic and according to our sources, he deals in stolen Ugandan government medicines. This is Patrick Kidega. They have indicated here, government of Uganda, not for sale. In actual sense, this one, we are not supposed to sell it. We're supposed to give it 
Patrick Kidega accepts the equivalent of $2,000 from us and promises to deliver a stock of anti-malaria medicines enough to treat a whole village. A few days later, he takes us to a village, seemingly in the middle of nowhere. Patrick comes out with a huge carton full of stolen anti-malarials. He takes the team from pick-up point to pick-up point. At this private pharmacy, the drugs are taken out of the original packaging so that the serial numbers cannot be traced. And the government of Uganda not for sale? It's just written here, government of Uganda not for sale. It's, 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 they're all government drugs. If people were punished, real punished severely, that really becomes very risky to touch government medicines. We would really have less crime in that field. But there's so much leniency. We've shown how it's possible to buy large quantities of stolen UG medicines. But can we target those higher up the supply chain? Patrick Kidega says he's dealing with the district health officers or DHOs. They are the topmost government employees at district level and have authority to order more medicines, more than they need. A man claiming to be the DHO of the northern district of Kidgum agrees to meet with us. Me, I like business. I like deal. What do I mean? Truth should be there. Because deal is dirty. This is the point. And if you are going to deal with me and Patrick, we need to be trustworthy. So that when you're leaving me, you go in peace. You talk of Kwatem, eh? If indeed Francis Odur is a DHO, all he has to do is to request a surplus amount of government medicines and then fiddle the figures. It's the same scam used by Jamila, the records officer from Arua. Right. Yeah. Later that day, Patrick and Odur call us to say Odur has 96 boxes of anti malarials if we want them. But the team could not afford to do such a big deal. That same night, we returned to Kampala to store all the stolen medicines at my home before handing them back to the government of Uganda at the end of our investigation. That would later turn out to be a big mistake. We had set up one last illegal deal with the pharmacist in Kampala. I stayed in our hotel while Kasim and Godfrey headed out to meet him. And then we lost contact. Oh, come on, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. Are you worried? Yeah, I'm nervous, man. I don't know where these guys are. I don't know if they're safe. Could be some bad cops or rogue guys or criminal guys who are holding them and they may want a ransom. And that, when it gets to that, then you get scared, man. You get really, really, really scared. Finally, eight and a half hours after Kasim and Godfrey went missing, I received word that they had been taken by military intelligence. After my colleagues were captured and put in jail, the security forces went to my home to try and arrest me too. They surrounded our house, and when they couldn't find me, they arrested my wife. I was in my room and I saw on TV. We are looking for Mr. Serwanja to help us with our investigation on how government drugs ended up at his home. So I'm like, okay, this is it. I have to turn myself in. We need allies in the fight against corruption. And we should not punish those who are lying with the government in the fight against corruption. They are not drug thieves. Or we are not stealing government drugs. But they were actually doing investigative journalism. I remember journalists coming in with me and chanting, he's one of our own, we have to get him out of here. And the police blocking them and telling them you can't go beyond this place. That same day, we were all released on bond, pending further police investigation. There are very many people who are living in rural areas who walk kilometers 
to go to access medical facilities and to access drugs. And once they've walked there, there are no drugs. And sometimes even at hospital level, there are no drugs. And it's not that the government doesn't provide these drugs, but it's because there are individuals out there who are actually selling these drugs. This is why we are investigating this matter. We received no response from the Arua Hospital Management, and both Jamila team and Patrick Kidega have since disappeared, believed kidnapped. Francis Odur turned out not to be a district health officer as he claimed, but a health worker in a government health center in Gulu district. He did not respond to our request for comment. To fight medicine theft in the future, the Ministry of Health is aiming to keep track of all drugs by computerizing its whole medicine distribution system. The charges against us have still not been dropped. It remains to be seen whether we will be prosecuted. Should I keep quiet when that is happening? No. I choose to speak up. Because if, if this is going to change the future of this country, then it's worth it.